Welcome to the grand opening of the National Museum of the United States Army. The National Museum of the United States Army celebrates over 245 years of Army history and honors our nation's soldiers, past, present, and future, in the regular Army, the Army Reserve, and the Army National Guard. Thank you for joining us for our virtual ceremony. Out of an abundance of caution during the COVID-19 pandemic, there is no in-person audience today, and certain ceremonial elements have been pre-recorded. Please welcome the official party to the stage. Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Ryan D. McCarthy. Chief of Staff of the Army, General James C. McConville. Sergeant Major of the Army, Michael A. Grinston. Director of the National Museum of the United States Army, Ms. Tammy Call. Accompanied by Acting Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Christopher C. Miller. And Chairman to the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark A. Milley. Now presenting the colors is the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, accompanied by the Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. The national anthem will be performed by Sergeant First Class Jesse Neese from the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight? O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Oh, right shoulder! Delivering the invocation today is Chief of Chaplains of the Army, Chaplain Major General Thomas L. Soljum. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask that you please join me as we mark this occasion in a word of prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, as we dedicate the opening of the National Museum of the United States Army, we humbly request your divine presence. We pray that you will fulfill the hope that we have for this place that is a fitting tribute to America's soldiers' service throughout our nation's history. May it be a sacred memorial to the men and women who sacrificed themselves to make and keep America free. It is our hope, Father, that those who walk the museum's halls and gaze upon its exhibits will reflect on our nation's great accomplishments and sacrifices. 
that we may be inspired and challenged to sustain our country's freedom and greatness with our own service to others. O oh Lord, thank you for the countless volunteers, historians, veterans, and leaders whose tireless efforts made this phenomenal museum the gift it is today. May you shower them with blessings. May this museum shine brightly, be a beacon of the American love of liberty, a monument honoring the strength of our nation, and a shrine to those who answer the nation's call to serve our great army. It is in your most holy and righteous name I pray, amen. The National Museum of the United States Army is a joint effort between the United States Army and the Army Historical Foundation. The mission of the Army Historical Foundation is to honor the American soldier by preserving and presenting the history and heritage of the United States Army. From his home in Massachusetts, please welcome the chairman of the Army Historical Foundation, General Retired Mr. Gordon Secretary, R. Sullivan. Chief, distinguished guests, friends, and supporters of the Army Museum. Welcome to the opening ceremony of the National Museum of the United States Army. This museum is a giant tribute to over 30 million soldiers who have served throughout our history as a country. I think it is important that we take a moment to remember one soldier in particular. General Bill Hartzog, whose recent passing has saddened us all. He was a dedicated soldier who served as chairman of the board for 15 years, trying to keep the campaign to build this impressive museum alive. We are grateful for his enormous effort and offer the deepest condolences to his wife and family. Bill, rest in peace. It is my honor to introduce the Chief of Staff, 40th Chief of Staff of the Army, General Jim McConville, Combat Aviator, 36th Vice Chief of Staff of the Army, CG of the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault, U.S. Army Deputy Chief of Staff G1, a great soldier of whom we are very proud, General Jim McConville. Over to you, Chief. Well, thank, thank you, sir, and, and, and our sincere thanks to General Hodzog for what he did for this great museum. And, and good afternoon to all. And it may be re raining outside, and we continue to battle COVID, but every day, is a great day to be in the United States Army because we serve with the world's greatest soldiers, both, both past and present. And their heroic stories are represented here at the National Museum of the United States Army. And to everyone watching, thank you for being a part of this important event, and we're sorry you couldn't be here in person. Acting Secretary of Defense Miller, Chairman General Milley and Mrs. Milley and our Army team, Secretary McCarthy, Sergeant Major of the Army, Grinston, and our Soldier of the Year, Son Akinola. I'm honored to be part of this great and grand opening with you all. General Sullivan, thank you for everything you've done to make this day possible. All of us from the Army and all of us from Quincy, Massachusetts, are extremely proud of what you've done for the museum and what you have done for the nation. The Army's history is America's history. The Army has been here since before the birth of our nation. Our founding fathers recognized the need for an Army to protect our freedoms and our way of life, and we have been doing that for over 245 years. The Army exists to protect the nation. That's our job. And that is what we work hard to do every single day, and we are very proud to serve the American people. The National Museum of the United States Army is a special place because it honors the accomplishments, the sacrifices, and the commitment of our American soldiers throughout the nation's history. The Army Museum has done an incredible job of bringing to life the inspirational stories of service and sacrifice 
of American soldiers. Every soldier has a story, and the Army Museum is the home of those stories. This museum makes me feel incredibly proud to be a member of the United States Army. We stand on the shoulders of the heroes who have gone before us. We strive to live up to their legacy every single day. We are blessed to have men and women who have been willing to raise their right hand and, send, and say, send me, who have been willing to sacrifice their lives to make us the greatest country in the world. These sacrifices will inspire everyone who visits the museum. I want to thank the hard work of the Army Historical Foundation and everyone who helped make this day possible. Ms. Tammy Call, you and your team have done an absolutely incredible job. Happy Veterans Day. Thank you all being here to celebrate the opening with us. It's about people first, winning matters, and we remain Army strong. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 24th Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Ryan D. McCarthy. Our distinguished guests, Secretary Miller, Chairman Milley, thank you for being here. Chief SMA, Ms. Tammy Cole, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today as we open the doors of the National Museum of the United States Army. There have been thousands of hands who have worked tirelessly over the course of years to bring this dream into reality. I did want to recognize General Gordon Sullivan, the 32nd Chief of Staff of the Army, for his leadership in making this possible. Thanks to the Department of the Army, the Army Historical Foundation, Ms. Tammy Call, and countless others for their dog determination that this American treasure now lives. Today is a momentous day, not just for the Army, but the nation at large. As we celebrate our shared history, educate and inspire the next generation of patriots, and, uh, and honor the extraordinary contributions made to preserve freedom and safeguard America. This grand opening is particularly fitting to occur on Veterans Day, where we salute the sacrifice of those who have served. We are honored and humbled to be a part of today, and so this is a homecoming of sorts. Under one roof, we have the Army story, safeguarded and preserved for our children's children and generations to follow. In doing so, we have the nation's story captured as well, as they are inextricably linked. In times of great peril, it is the U.S. Army who responds to the nation's call, from fighting tyranny in our infancy, preserving a union during the Civil War, storming the beaches of Normandy against an entrenched evil, stopping the spread of communism in the dense jungles of Vietnam, to pursuing terrorists in the mountains of Afghanistan, a fight that is still ongoing today. This museum captures how the Army Corps of Engineers helped map, connect, and build America. This museum shows how the work of Army scientists helped save untold numbers across the world with development and distribution of vaccines against deadly viruses such as malaria, Ebola, Zika, and most recently, the work towards a cure for COVID-19. This museum also shows the battles the Army has faced inside our ranks as each new generation challenges the perceptions of decency and improve the organization from within. Heroic actions are detailed inside from units like the All African American 54th Massachusetts Infantry Regiment to the desegregation of the armed forces in 1948 from the Women's Army Corps to the expansion of Army women into combat operations. This museum helps capture these stories, amplified by pictures, artifacts, and personal accounts from the people who lived them, linking these heroic deeds with the ordinary citizens who performed them. This is not just the Army's museum, but it's America's museum. Year after year, totaling two and a half centuries, Ordinary men and women from every corner of the country and every walk of life achieve the extraordinary. This living museum will help their sacrifice endure for the ages and serves as a repository for all Americans to 
honor our heroes and inspire the next generation of free men and women to serve. Thanks to our men and women who have served and continue to serve. Welcome home. We need something to cut the ribbon with. Any suggestions? Well, uh, I have a knife. I've one. got this Gerber. Uh, something else? Any, any, anybody else? I got an easel. I got a hatchet. All right, we're getting there. I got a saber. I think we should use this. Yes. 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 That's, That's the one right, right there. Yeah. That's the one. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 20th Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark A. Milley. As uh, the 40th Chief said, what a great day uh, for the United States Army uh, to be celebrating the opening of this museum. And, uh, and if there are thousands of hands that put this together. I want to say particular thanks to Acting Secretary Chris Miller for being here today. Thank you, sir. Uh, Tracy. Uh, you're here somewhere, but thank you so much for what you've done pulling all together. And of course, General Sullivan, uh, who we just saw on the screen. Uh, he, is, uh, he was a chief in our early years uh, when we were lieutenants and captains, and, and chief, you're still our chief. Uh, you were a great chief then, you're a great chief now, and thank you so much uh, for your inspiration and your vision uh, to bring this all to fruition. And, and of course, thanks also uh, on the passing of uh, General Hartzog, uh, another great general officer in the United States Army. Uh, thanks, Sergeant Major Grinston, uh, for your leadership in putting all this together. And I do want to thank uh, Sergeant Akinola uh, for being the Soldier of the Year. Uh, we'll see him in a few minutes, uh, but thanks for being a great example of all that is good about being a soldier. Uh, to all of you, thank you, and to all of those of you who are watching, uh, thank you so much for participating in today's events. Today is Veterans Day, uh, and on the 11th day, in the 11th month at the 11th hour, in 1918, the war to end all wars came to an end. It was the final day of 47 brutal days of fighting in the Meuse-Argonne, stopping today only because of the armistice that was declared to end the Great War. That offensive was the largest battle in U.S. history, with 1.2 million Americans fighting and dying and 26,000 of them paid the ultimate sacrifice in only 47 days. And it was made much worse by a global pandemic, the Spanish flu. We cannot truly appreciate the sacrifice of our soldiers from the Continental Army to today or comprehend what they went through unless we see the weapons they use, feel the uniforms they wear, hear the stories they told, or read the letters they wrote. You and I will never fight through the haze and the mustard gas of the Meuse Argonne. We're not going to hear the whiz and the snap of Wehrmacht rounds while assaulting the last 100 yards of Omaha Beach. And no, we're not going to suffer the blistering cold of the chosen reservoir or smell the smoke of the Idrang Valley. But we can come here. We can see the relics and hear the stories through the eyes and the voices of the individual soldiers who endured so much for the cause of freedom and, and their unrelenting devotion to the Constitution of the United States, the moral North Star for all of us in uniform. It is that document that gives purpose to our service. It is that document that gives purpose to this museum. And we in uniform are willing to die to pass it on to the next generation. In it are the ideas and the values that make up this experiment called the United States of America. And the motto of the United States Army for over 200 years, since 14 June 1775, the motto has been, this we will defend, and that this refers to the Constitution and to protect the liberty of the American people. You see, we are unique among armies. We are unique among militaries. We do not take an oath 
to a king or a queen, a tyrant or a dictator. We do not take an oath to an individual. No, we do not take an oath to a country, a tribe, or a religion. We take an oath to the Constitution. And every soldier that is represented in this museum, every sailor, airman, marine, coast guardsman, each of us will protect and defend that document regardless of personal price. That has been true across generations that are on display in this building, in this great museum, and allows all of us to connect and be forever tied to those who came before us. We will never turn our back on our duty to protect and defend the idea that is America, the Constitution of the United States, against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Back when our Army was first formed only 18 months later, Thomas Paine wrote some famous words in an essay entitled The Crisis. And he wrote, these are the times that try men's souls. And the summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of their country. But he who stands by it deserves the love of man and women. For tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. And from 1775 till today, the United States Army has stood there, has stood on the wall, stood in the breach, and defended the liberty of Americans. Thank you. Happy Veterans Day. May God bless the United States Army, and may God bless America. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Acting Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Christopher C. Miller. Chairman, thanks for setting the bar very high for the new guy to come in and make a few words. I think all I would say to your uh, statements is amen, well done. This is a great day for our Army. In fact, it's a perfect day, Veterans Day, to celebrate this unbelievable accomplishment. I know this day isn't about me, but I hope you'll humor me for a few moments and allow me to reflect on the powerful ideal of our Army and how it has been a force for profound good in our world for over 245 years. I want to tell you this in one small story, mine, that I think is emblematic of so many others. On June 6, 1983, 17 year old Private Christopher Charles Miller enlisted in the 410th Infantry Regiment of the Army Reserve at Camp Dodge, Iowa. I didn't come from a long line of military service. The only family tradition was my, my father, who was drafted into the Army and earned this combat infantryman badge during the Korean War. My only desire was to serve my nation. This morning, I had the indescribable privilege and honor to stand with Chairman Milley, Army Chief of Staff McConville, Chief of the Army National Guard. I'm sorry, Chief of the National Guard Bureau. Got to get that right. Hokinson and the other members of the Joint Staff and Cabinet Secretaries to participate in the presidential wreath laying ceremony at the tomb of the unknown soldier at Arlington National Cemetery. My heart swelled with, my, with pride as I saw the Sergeant of the Guard in the platoon I once led perform her duties. Chief, Sergeant Major in the Army, Sec Mr. Secretary, your force is magnificent. Well done. Other than marrying my wife, the best thing I ever did, like tens of millions of Americans before me, was joining our Army. I wouldn't be standing here today if not for the values, courage, and spirit that our Army instilled in me. It's a privilege to be here on this historic occasion as we commemorate the grand opening of the National Museum of the United States Army. Today's celebration is the culmination of years, 20 plus years of hard work. And I want to thank the Department of the Army, the Army Historical Foundation, and the many others who helped turn this vision into reality. 
Special thanks to General Olvin. General, I was a lowly second lieutenant when you were my chief. Your vision, example, and leadership were so important in creating our peerless army that we are part of today. It is quite fitting that this museum would open its doors on Veterans Day, the time when we recognize the selfless service and sacrifice of all those who have answered the nation's call. Speaking of call, Tammy Call, well done, ma'am, well done. Thank you for leaning into this and taking this thing on. Secretary McCarthy, battle buddy from the fields of strife in southern Afghanistan when you were in the 75th Ranger Regiment. It's just an extraordinary honor to be here beside you today. Uh, who would have thunk it? Uh, but thank you for your leadership. A grateful country thanks you today and every day for your commitment to protect our homeland, our people, and our way of life. I'm glad to be joined by my fellow veterans here today to celebrate the story of the American soldier. And on a personal note, I look forward to seeing the path of re remembrance. It's comprised of roughly 8,000 commemorative bricks, each dedicated to an Army supporter, civilian or soldier, including one for my father, a proud Korean War veteran. Within these walls lies the most comprehensive collection of U.S. Army artifacts, documents, and images ever assembled in one place. Only here can you immerse yourself in Revolutionary War memorabilia, experience the sights and sounds of trench warfare during World War I, and see up close one of the six remaining D-Day landing craft. Around each corner are vivid and compelling exhibits that trace the evolution of warfare through time and illustrate how the Army adapts and overcomes the challenges of the day. The Changing World Gallery, for example, captures the innovation and spirit of innovation of the Army as it emerged from the Cold War, harnessed new technologies with devastating effect in the first Gulf War, and then transitioned to fight the war and terror. At the same time, it set the stage for our current challenge, modernizing the force to win a high-end conflict in this new era of great power competition. Together, these stories bring to life the remarkable history of the Army and the countless sacrifices of the American soldier. From the fields of Lexington Concord to the hills of San Juan and from the cliffs of Normandy to the Korngal Valley, more than 30 million brave men and women have donned the Army uniform to fight for freedom at home and abroad. While they hail from different backgrounds, races, religions, and creeds, these soldiers all have one thing in common an unfailing devotion to support and defend the Constitution and uphold the core values of the United States Army. For more than 240 years, they've made innumerable contributions to our nation and the world, not just in combat, but also in humanitarian assistance, disaster relief, international cooperation, and other vital missions. Their feats are enshrined throughout this museum. Moreover, many have paid the ultimate price to protect the blessings of liberty that we enjoy today. As the beneficiaries of their sacrifice, it is our responsibility to preserve their sacred memory and honor their heroic deeds. That is precisely what this museum does and why it's so important that for all to see. I can't wait to bring my family here. The exhibits shown here promote a deeper understanding and appreciation of the Army's achievements. They illuminate the hard-earned lessons of war and tell us why we must continue to adapt and lead in a world fraught with danger. And the personal narratives woven throughout these halls will encourage and inspire the next generation of soldiers who will lead the world's finest fighting force to even greater heights in the future. It's an honor to be here today, and I want to congratulate the United States Army, Army Historical Foundation, on this grand opening. I also want to thank the many patriots whose generosity supports this national, tra this national treasure. I also want to express my gratitude to the women and men of the Department of the Army, past and present, for all you do to uphold our Constitution, defend our nation, protect our way of life. Happy Veterans Day. Well done. What an historic day. Oh, wait. I have one more thing in my pocket. Chairman, 1st Battalion, 506 Infantry, stands alone north of the river, Normandy, Eindhoven, Bastogne, Vietnam, Korea. I think you owe me a drink, Chairman. <laughs> Thank you so much. Congratulations.
Now arriving with the ceremonial saber is the United States Army Parachute Team, nicknamed the Golden Knights. The Golden Knights is a demonstration and competition team drawn from all branches of the Army. Today's team includes Sergeant First Class Mike Cook from La Crosse, Wisconsin, Staff Sergeant Clay Stevens from Stafford, Virginia, Sergeant First Class Chad Riddlebaugh from Daytona Beach, Florida, Sergeant First Class Trey Gullick from Blacksburg, South Carolina, and Sergeant John Pemberton from Sanford, North Carolina. I'll be the truest way impatiently not breaking I'm staking up on my movement losing is not an option I can come to comprehend this that honor and respect every lesson I will defend Sergeant John Pemberton is handing off the ceremonial saber to the 2020 soldier of the year Sergeant James Akinola a combat medic currently assigned to Fort Jackson South Carolina the ceremonial saber ties the army's past to its present a former weapon of war now retained as a ceremonial and dress sidearm Soldiers representing the United States Army from the founding of our nation until today signify an unbroken line of tradition and heritage that can be explored in the National Museum of the United States Army. Today's soldiers stand on the shoulders of all those who came before, and the museum is dedicated to telling those soldiers' stories. Sergeant Akinola will now join the leaders to cut the ribbon and officially open the museum. Three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today for the grand opening of the National Museum of the United States Army. For free tickets and more information, please visit our website at www.thenemusa.org. We look forward to your visit.